Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be talking about things that I wish I knew before getting Dobermans. These are going to be just a bunch of pieces of advice coming from a Doberman owner now that I've had the dogs for quite some time. And I just wanted to go over some things that I wish I knew as a first time Doberman owner. So if you are looking to get a Doberman in the future, or if you want to learn just a little bit more, She's drinking my coffee. Or if you just want to learn a little bit more about the breed, this video is for you. So let's get on with it. So I'm actually going to be expanding on some of the points that I already made in one of my, two of my recent Instagram posts. I made like a carousel photo thing of just a bunch of different tips and stuff. So I just wanted to expand on those topics in general because there's only so much I can explain on Instagram. We're gonna be reviewing every single one of those like tips that I gave on like the little carousel. And I'll be going into a little bit more depth about each one. Currently can't breathe because I'm getting body slammed by an 80, four pound Doberman. This might not be in any particular order and I honestly might hit some of the same topics twice, but one of the first posts I made was Dobermans are prone to separation anxiety. I've never had to deal with separation anxiety with these two, but I do know that it is a very common thing, especially with these dogs, just because they're just so, look at Katana. They're just so attached and like Velcro-esque. Obviously some dogs are more Velcro-y than others, but I feel like Dobermans in general and a lot of Doberman owners can't agree with me that Dobies are literally Velcro dogs. This is a great thing for most. I feel like some people really like it, but others it might be kind of annoying, especially since you literally have zero personal space while these guys are around. She is always constantly wanting to touch me. She just needs to be like by my side 24 seven. And I guess this could be to a default because it can cause separation anxiety if not managed at a young age. Well, I got Katana when she was older, but with Draco, we did crate train him at a young age. So he is really good in the crate and he's okay with chilling and being alone. But there was a period of time where he was literally horrible. There are some days where he just hates being in the crate by himself. So I have to crate him near the other dogs or just like in the same vicinity of because he doesn't like being in the crate by himself. He'll just keep whining and crying until he falls asleep. But Katana here loves her crate. I mean, all dogs are different, you know? So I may be saying all these facts and tips and everything and your Adobe might not even, like none of this may even apply, but I'm just speaking from my personal experience. But yeah, it is a well-known thing that Dobermans are prone to separation anxiety. However, if you manage it at a young age and teach them crate training and boundaries, then that wouldn't be something that you would honestly deal with in the long run. But my dogs are pretty calm and tame now. So I wanted to touch on this topic for a while now. So the next one is is I made this little slide about Dobermans may look cool and trendy, but you do have to ask yourself if you have the time, space, and money to even take care of one. I feel like with social media, it happens with all different types of dogs and pets, not just Dobermans or anything, but they're beautiful dogs. They're very aesthetically pleasing, as a lot of people may say. So it wouldn't be uncommon for someone to get one based off of their looks. Look at her. She's a beautiful girl. They're just beautiful, gorgeous, elegant looking dogs. Dogs. No other dogs look like these guys, you know? And so I feel like a lot of people do want them because they see photos online of them looking like scary or intimidating or they want scary dog privilege or whatever. And to be honest with you, I do create content around that sometimes, but I really do hope that it doesn't encourage people to just go out there to just purchase one because there is a lot more to them than just like their pretty looks. At the end of the day, they are working dogs and they do need an outlet. This next post could be a little bit controversial, but I do feel like I need to explain myself. So Dobermans are not the first choice for bite sports, and they're honestly considered an off-breed in the bite sport world, just because... Huh? As I was saying, Dobermans are not considered, oh gosh, the first um, choice for bite sports. And I feel like they are considered an off breed, especially according to many trainers. There just isn't that many working ones nowadays. I don't know if that's just in the US. I know overseas, I see a lot of IGP Dobermans. There are a select few that I see in the States. I am a part of the United Doberman Club and that specifically is called the UDC. And we only have working Dobies in this club. And that's kind of what we highlight. 
However, it is more rare compared to other breeds such as a Malinois or even a German Shepherd or Dutch Shepherd. So yeah, Dobies aren't the first choice for bite sports. And that's due to just the breed being more watered down. And also there's not that many breeders that breed specifically working Dobermans. They breed a lot of pet Dobies or show line Dobermans. I feel like this is a very controversial topic. Personally, this is what I believe. And if you do want a working Doberman, then you aren't gonna find one on Craigslist. You are gonna have to do your research about a breeder and you wanna look at pedigree and their parents and stuff and the workability of the parents. There's just so many other factors that come into place before just purchasing a Doberman, especially if you want one to do personal protection with or bite sports. You aren't gonna find that dog on Craigslist or on a random ad online. You are gonna have to do your due diligence before finding a breeder, especially if you're looking for a working line Doberman. So that's kind of like my little spiel about working Dobermans. And yes, Dobermans were actually the only, okay, good time, are actually the only dog breed bred for personal protection. I do agree with that. that. That is obviously a true statement. That's why they were bred to begin with. They are bred to protect you and be kind of a deterrent. However, they weren't really bred to bite, if that makes any sense. They were bred to be more alert and scary and everything and to bark and hold and to like deter and intimidate an intruder or a stranger. However, when it comes to biting, they aren't really bred for that. That's not really their expertise. However, this is all just my personal opinion and I don't wanna make anybody mad by saying these things, but I have talked to multiple trainers and this is what they're all saying. That's not to say that no Dobies are good at working. Obviously, there are so many great working Dobermans. So you just need to do your due diligence, due diligence if you want a true working Doberman. I also forgot to mention that the reason why they do not excel, people say they do not excel at bite sports, is because they are too nervy or anxious or they're the type of dog to just bark but not want to bite the decoy that is kind of the reasoning behind or why like people don't really choose them as their first pick if they're trying to do bite sports they also take a long time to mature so unlike my Malinois Beretta when I first got her she wanted to bite literally every single freaking thing that like ran in her direction but with Dobies they do take a little bit longer to build prey drive to want to bite luckily with Draco because we did go to a good breeder and there are working Doberman breeders. He was definitely having a great time biting as a puppy and it wasn't hard to build his drive. However, with a lot of Dobermans, for example, Katana, she would not bite a fly. She would not even hurt a fly. She'll bark at a fly, but will she chase the fly? Will she bite the fly? Probably not. So there is definitely a difference between the two dogs. Not there being cotton everywhere because the dogs just shred it up a pillow. But anyways, Ooh. next up, Dobermans are prone to same-sex aggression. Draco here personally does not like other male dogs. And that's just how he is. He is intact male dogs and larger male dogs. He's like a very specific boy. He just doesn't like other boys. Katana is actually okay with other females. However, when it comes to Draco, I do just have to be a little bit more mindful of where I bring him, especially if there's gonna be other intact male dogs there. I just avoid it completely and I usually just don't bring him. It's a dopey thing for sure. And I know other people that do struggle with this. Draco just wants to square up with every male dog. And it's not like he's like leash reactive to where he'll like bark if he sees another like male dog or something. It's mainly if that dog just gets like too close to his personal space, like his hackles will go up and he'll start growling. Intact male dogs is just not his thing and that's just something to consider. It is a little bit difficult managing two intact males together. I know once they reach a certain age, they just end up hating all different male dogs. However, that kind of happened with Draco. Like he was fine up until he got to the age of like two-ish. He just was not having it. And I know that's common amongst other dog breeds as well, but it is something to consider, especially with the Doberman. I know a couple people that do manage having two intact male Dobermans together and they say their dogs are fine. So I think it just varies male to male. Draco definitely has a more dominant personality. So I already know for the future, if I do end up getting another dog, that's why Beretta is in a boy because I knew Draco was not gonna get along with another dominant male in the house and I didn't wanna risk that and put more stress upon him. So it is something to consider, especially if you're looking to always add in another dog to the house. If I had it my choice and Draco was good with other boys, then Beretta would have been a boy instead of a girl. So that's just some things to consider. I mentioned breed bans in some countries or like breed restrictions. Amongst a lot of other breeds, Dobermans are unfortunately on that list. And it is just, 
discrimination within the breeds, but it is something to think about, especially if you, one, do not own a home, two, if you're looking for a house to rent or an apartment. I know a lot of apartments, especially in my area, don't allow Dobermans just because they're on that restricted breed list, which honestly isn't fair. But at the end of the day, I do realize that these are strong and powerful dogs and they can do some damage, obviously, but that's not to say with any other dog breed as well. A majority of the videos that I see online of a dog off leash attacking another dog, usually a lab or a golden, which is very interesting to me for some reason. Unfortunately, these guys are on the breed restriction list, so it is something to think about. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend this breed if you are moving a lot and renting an apartment or renting a home. Home insurance companies, it is higher if you have a Doberman or a dog on that list. So it is something to think about. Personally, we do own both of our homes. So it's not something that is like a make or break it for me. That is something definitely to consider if you do move around a lot or if you don't currently own your home before getting a Doberman. Next slide, just going to be straight up with you. Dobermans are not a healthy breed. They do suffer from a lot of genetic disorders and of course the heart disorder, dilated cardiomyopathy, which they don't even know the cause of that yet. I talk about DCM a lot, especially whenever I talk about the Dobermans because that is honestly one of the hard truths about owning a Doberman is dealing with dilated cardiomyopathy because around 58% of Dobermans do develop DCM and that is how a vast majority of them end up passing away prematurely and we're not really sure why that happens. Um, there are a couple theories out there but I'm not going to go too in depth with the theories of why DCM starts or if it's nutrition induced or genetically induced. There's not enough answers out there to why it happens to them. If you guys didn't know, DCM is known as the silent killer in Doberman. It is a very expensive condition to treat and there is no cure. So there's only maintenance and maintenance is very expensive. In order to catch this disease early, you have to do, which you have to meet up with your cardiologist or with their cardiologist at least annually. So we meet up with both of their cardiologists once a year. You can't do this at a general practice. You have to go to a specialist to do this. So you can't just go to your general vet and tell them that you want to check their, I mean, they'll auscultate the heart, but they won't do ECGs and they won't do holster monitors for 24 hours. So those are two things that I do with both my dogs annually. The way to not prevent DCM from happening, because regardless, if your dog does get DCM, then there's really no cure for it. However, catching it early is very, very helpful in prolonging your dog's life with the treatment medication. Once you already see symptoms of DCM, such as coughing, labor breathing, all that good stuff, okay, it's on. Wrestling with a bear. As I was saying, if you do catch it early, then you are able to prolong your dog's life. But if your dog already shows symptoms of DCM, then it is often too late and your dog doesn't have much longer, unfortunately. But that is why I meet with the cardiologist annually and it is very expensive. It does add up and it is an annual charge for both of them. I know there are cheaper options, with the Holter tests and ECGs and stuff, if you are a part of a Doberman club in your area, sometimes they have Holters that you're able to rent, so that is nice. I unfortunately don't have anyone in this area that is able to let me rent one, but if you have one in your area, then that is preferred. Dobermans are not a cheap breed to own. Both these dogs cost me around $2,000 each per year to do the Holter and ECG. That is literally just for their health. That's not even for treatment or annual exams or medications or anything like that. That's literally just for the testing. So if you really want a Doberman, please think about the annual cost of owning one. Obviously it doesn't even include food. These guys are so expensive to own just to maintain their health a certain way. And I really wanted to emphasize on that because there's not that many Doberman accounts that like talk about DCM and I, I wish that was something that I knew a lot beforehand and how much this breed is riddled with different diseases. People talk about it, but I feel like no one really stresses on that fact. It's just very, very expensive. These guys are just so freaking expensive and I wish healthcare was cheaper for these dogs, but I also wish human healthcare was cheaper. That's just how the world works, unfortunately. So just something to consider before getting one of these guys. So if you are looking for a breeder for Dobermans, a lot of people always 
ask me for a breeder list or people that I recommend, kennels that I recommend and stuff like that. And personally, it's just such a question that I do not have a straight answer to. Because every breeder is different and I don't want to recommend a breeder if I don't know like every little thing about them. I don't want to be the one responsible if you get a poorly bred dog. However, I would recommend if you are looking for a Doberman breeder to go on the United Doberman Club website. That is a club that I'm a part of. There is a breeder registry on there or the Doberman Pinscher Club of America website if you're looking for an American Doberman. UDC kind of has a little bit more European lines and the Doberman Pinscher Club of America obviously has more of American show lines. So it kind of depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for more of a working Doberman versus an American Doberman, kind of depends on your lifestyle. So those are the two places where I would recommend looking at the breeder registries and really doing your research and due, due, due diligence about each and every one of the kennels on there. But I would definitely check out those two places if you're looking to get a Doberman and please stay away from places like Craigslist and or Instagram backyard breeders because I know for a fact there's a lot of cool, cool big Dobermans on Instagram and people are always asking where to get those and most of those famous breeders on Instagram are backyard breeders. So please stay away from getting a dog off of Instagram and or Craigslist or any of like those penny saver magazines. I'm sorry, look, look at this man. What are you doing, bro? So forget barking. I mean, yeah, my dogs bark, but you know what they do more than bark? They freaking whine and they whine so much. It's like to the point where it's like a high pitch whine. I don't think I have any of it on camera. Like when they whine, my first reaction isn't to like pull out my camera and record them. It's to tell them like, hey, can you guys like stop whining? Dobermans whine so much. And we're gonna get some more of like the quirks, the quirky things that Dobermans do because a lot of people don't know this. And I didn't even know about these things before getting a Doberman and no one freaking talks about it, which is why I'm making this video. But Dobermans whine so freaking much. They whine when they are waiting for their food. They whine if they want something. Draco doesn't whine as much as Katana, but this girl literally whines for every little thing. Whenever I'm making her food, she knows I'm making her food. So she's in the backyard like whining, like eh, eh, eh. And it's, sorry, sorry Katana. It's just, it's crazy. And no one talks about this, but they just whine so much. Next up, we are gonna talk about flank suckling, which is what Katana is doing right now. She is sucking on her flank. And that is another weird quirk that Dobermans do. Did you hear that? That is her leg. Dobermans are also genetically <laughs> predisposed to this weird quirk. It's called flank sucking and or just normal suckling. So Draco always needs to suck blankets or pillows before he goes to sleep. That's like his favorite thing to do. And Katana chooses to suck on her own leg. And it is a form of obsessive compulsive disorder in Dobies. And it is due, it's like a gene or something. I have to like look into it more, but on the Doberman Pantry Club of America, they have an article about it. You can read all about it there. Just know that it is not because they got taken away from their parents too early. Both of these dogs have been with mom and dad for over the amount actually, or have been with mom over the amount than they honestly probably should have. And it is due to a genetic component in Dobermans. I don't know if it's in other breeds as well, but Dobermans do suffer from this. And it's not a bad thing unless they start actually self-mutilating themselves. I mean, I know I can get her to stop like at any minute, but I think it's just a self-soothing slash calming thing for her. I post some videos of her doing this and people are always like, she got taken away from mom too early. And that's just simply not true. When I say it's a Doberman thing, it is literally just a Doberman thing. It's such a Doberman thing that the Doberman Pinter Club of America even made a whole freaking article about it because so many Dobermans suffer from this and it's just a common weird quirk that they do. And literally no one's ever talked about this before. I didn't even know this was a thing. When she did it for the first time, I honestly thought something was really wrong with her. So I took her to the vet and I was like freaking out. I was like, maybe she has like this weird like brain disorder and it just makes her do the... It's just a genetic thing. So I really hope that this video was helpful for some of you guys. I'll leave some links and articles at the bottom in the description so you guys can read up more about certain diseases or just some things that I mentioned in this video. But it's really, really important and I really hope that a lot of people watch this video before considering even getting a Doberman because I know they're such cool looking dogs but there's so much more to them than just their looks and I feel like they're a really misunderstood breed because people don't know how to handle them properly. So obviously do your due diligence with researching the breed. My tip to everyone considering getting a Doberman is really getting out there and not only talking to Doberman owners, but actually getting hands-on experience with the dog. So whether if that's going to like a bike club or joining a Doberman club, even talking to 
breeders and stuff, you'll learn so much before actually committing to getting one. So I highly encourage people to go, go out there and just do your research about these guys and maybe they're a good fit for you. So hopefully this video definitely sheds some insight on Doberman ownership and just some things to consider. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.